All right, how's everybody doing? All right, show of hands in the back. Can you hear me okay back there? Great, great. All right, so my name is Brian Benson. I'm a uh, customer, customer engineer here at Google. I'm actually based out of Charlotte. Uh, my background is wide and uh, very, very varied. Um, done a few sessions out at Wendy Tree before and been out, been out at the site before, but a uh, quick background. Um, I've been at Google about two years, um, based here, actually Lake Wiley, South Carolina, so local, but still in a different state. Um, prior to Google, worked at uh, Oracle for a few years and uh, SAS Institute, so my background has been heavily development, database, uh, good word as well. And, um, you know, in my time here at Google, we've done a lot of different things. We've actually even uh, got another Googler, so Earl, if you can just show your hand real quick. All right, so you guys actually have two technical Googlers in the room in Charlotte that never happens here because we're all in that lab. Um, so happy to be talking with you. What we're going to do today is go through um, how to build data pipelines and how to leverage Java to do that, Java and Native specifically. Before starting, I like to do a little bit of, I guess, a little bit of an icebreaker. And if anybody knows me well, I am a really big comic guy. Sometimes I walk around with a Marvel t-shirt. Um, I think I've seen every movie that my son and I go as soon as they come out. One of my favorite uh, movies and series is The Avengers. Show of hands, anybody who has not seen The Avengers before. All right, I will try not to spoil it for you if you are trying to go watch uh, Endgame. So, lots of different characters, um, and there's, there's an analogy here too, but uh, lots of different characters, lots of different superheroes. Um, a lot of different people have favorite superheroes. Anybody have a favorite here, like uh, Iron Man, by any chance? There's always an Iron Man. Uh, so, a lot of different characters. I like all the characters, but my favorite is actually different. This is actually the one series where I like the bad guy. So, <laughs> the bad guy in the series is Thanos. And everybody roots against Thanos because nobody wants him to get stones, get all the power, destroy the world, blah, blah, blah. Right? Uh, in my case, this is the one time I actually root for the bad guy. So if anybody saw... Brian, you look like your brother <laughs> well, I'm working on the muscle thing, right? So we gotta, <laughs> gotta get there, right? But, um, you know, with, with Thanos, the one thing about him is he's always trying to get these Infinity Stones to destroy the world. So if you didn't see Infinity War, um, for, for people without spoiling it, a lot of people were sad. I was like, it finally happened. The bad guy actually did well. Um, and then uh, Endgame came out afterwards. But with Thanos, the difference between him before he got the stones and after was drastic, right? Because he can be defeated once he got the stones that gave him the power, right? So um, those stones, when used together, gave him a lot of abilities to, to do some great things. So kind of theme here I'm going with this is when we talk about data, right? When we talk about moving data. How do we do that efficiently? I like to think of the solutions that you can use, specifically in cloud or on-prem, as those infinity stones that grant you that power, right? So one of the things we're going to talk about first, and I'm calling this the infinity stone, so work with me here, um, is Apache Beam. By any chance, by show of hands, has anybody heard of Apache Beam? So I'll do some education here as well. All right? So I'll start at the ground level. So, there's a big history here. Apache Beam is open source, heavily based on Java. There's a lot you can do with this to build a data pipeline. What's actually really nice about Apache Beam is, as with all things, Google had a great influence on it. Uh, so we'll go back in history, we'll talk about some great things here, but we've done a lot of things internally. We have a really common theme at Google. We do things internally, we make sure they work, uh, we use them for ourselves, and then we decide, hey, we could probably monetize this we'll release the product, but before we even do that, everything we've done internally for the last 20-ish years, if you go to research.google.com, we release a paper on it. And that paper describes not just what we did, but how we did it. So a lot of people will get these papers, they'll read it, and they'll create something similar to it and release that into the market space as an open source product. Um, Apache Beam is really no different than that. So we did a lot of different technology. We started with MapReduce. We wrote some papers. Um, we started MapReduce in 2004. 
What we did in 2014 is we released uh, a managed service called Dataflow, which we'll talk about as well, which is how do I move data from different, different places and do that efficiently. After we released the managed service, we actually released Apache Beam as well, or worked with Apache Beam, um, the Apache uh, organization, to make this a more community-driven product. So Apache Beam came out shortly. It's been widely adopted ever since. What is Apache Beam? So, Apache Beam is a unified model that is portable that can allow me to write a pipeline in Java. And I can then deploy that pipeline on-prem or in the cloud, other cloud providers as well. So being open source means I can move my code around based on whatever the cloud providers decide to use. Um, heavily based on Java, started in Java. We've actually, it's actually been extended to Python as well, so Python's been an alpha for that for a while now. Um, and it gives you an SDK that's open that you can leverage API. So I'm actually gonna show you some of the code as well and explain how that operates. But the runners in Apache Beam actually distribute the data. Now, why do you use Apache Beam? First off, it's unified, right? So I can use a single programming model that can take a batch workload, can take a streaming workload, and I can push that out to move my data. Second is it's portable, right? So now that it's open source, I can execute this on Chrome in a VM. I can put it in a cloud provider running in a VM as well, so I'm not dependent on what cloud providers do. And then third, it's extensible. And I'll show you a couple of demos around this as well. But the vision for Beam was to provide end users with a language, or two, or three, right? Um, the writers to run the models, and then the runners to actually do the execution of whatever you built. And it's heavily code-based. This is not something that's drag and drop. There are templates that will be provided. I'll show you some of those templates. But generally, you're writing a pipeline yourself to develop it. So, Getting into some code, does anybody understand kind of the, uh, this is a Java group, anybody here not know Java? It's okay to raise your hand, because there's a ton of languages out there. All right, I'm partial, I'm not going to talk about it, I'm partial to Golang myself, because we, we created it at Google. Um, but if you look at the very top, uh, read text files, right, so just trying to translate what the language is doing. So we're reading the text files. Split it into words. So let's just say, for instance, in this line here, GS in the Google Cloud means I'm pointing it to a storage bucket. Um, you know, EC2 bucket in the Amazon side, Azure has buckets as well. So in this case, I want to read from a storage bucket. And then I want to do a count on that. So right, I can do a split, tell it what I'm looking for, and do a count uh, from the Java side as well. I format that. I write it out to an output file, which is also a storage bucket as well, and now I have my first Beam project, right? Very straightforward, um, very easy to kind of go through. You can do that in batch, or you can do that in streaming mode. Yeah, right. How does it differ from PubSub? I'll talk about that. That's a good segue, and I'm about three slides away from me, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> when you do Apache Beam, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're really asking a series of four questions, right? What, where, when, and how? What am I trying to move? What, where, what results are going to be calculated as a result of this? Where am I going to calculate those results? And then the processing and then the how. What does that mean in Apache Beam speak is you've got your what, where, when, and how. You've got your SDK for writing the pipeline. You start with Java. We're going to stick to Java for the duration of this talk. And then you've got your runners. Your runners in the cloud world and on-prem if you think about everything here that's listed, the only thing that is not able to be run on-prem is the one product that we've created at Google, in this case, um, Cloud Dataflow. Uh, Apache Flink, Apache Spark, um, and then running it local, you can do all that on your on-prem environments. I'll talk about what Dataflow is, but Dataflow at its, in its, in its highest level is managed Apache. So the Cloud Dataflow service we get into this, this terminology now of no ops, servers. Those are all buzzwords, but they're actually very effective buzzwords. So Dataflow is fully managed, it's no ops. You don't have to worry about servers to configure it. It's a, it's a pipeline that can expand or decrease based on the workload you throw it, whether it be batch or real time. Underneath the covers, Dataflow runs Apache Beam. So you write a Beam pipeline and that same Java code, you push it out into Dataflow, 
data flow does all the infrastructure management to move the data. There are various aspects of creating data pipelines. You capture data, you move data, and then you put it into a target system. When we talk about PubSub, we'll transition to that. PubSub is all about capturing the data, right? Apache Beam, data flow, is the actual engine that is moving that data once it is captured into various systems, right? So it's all a connected architecture. Yes. Where are you going from Correct. Yep. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that too. So I'm going to talk through the products and then we'll go to the architecture now. So the data flow service is important for a couple of reasons. Um, it integrates with all of our products on the GCP platform. It is API based, so it is open. You can develop one and you can call from it on prem or you can call from it in the cloud as well. And it supports Java. Well, we are actually in alpha now for Python, so we've had some users requesting Python. We're always trying to add new languages as well for the platform itself. The lifecycle management is it is fully managed, meaning no matter how many nodes I want, that all those nodes are fully managed and, and, and handled for me underneath the covers. So whether I need one server to run a specific workload or I need 20 servers to run a specific workload, Dataflow does all that auto scaling above, um, behind the scenes. It also can do dynamic scaling as well, right? So scale up, scale down based on that, and then workload rebalancing to make sure that we're effectively using all the resources to properly process your workloads in the amount of time you need. Now with that, there are three key scenarios where we use data pipelines as a whole, not just data flow, data pipelines. Real time, which is a very high requirement for a lot of companies, uh, scheduled batch, which is actually more common, right? We have a lot of customers who come to us and say, hey, I do a nightly, nightly upload from database, you name it, or db 2 whatever the case is. I want to get it into the cloud. How do I do that? We're going to do it every night. Every night we're going to take the deltas, push it to a new system. And then the last one is becoming more common as well, event-driven architecture, so trigger pipelines, meaning once this data hits the bucket, monitor that bucket and kick off some downstream process, right? So it's not true real time, but it is triggered based on certain events that happen from there. Examples of that, in the real time area, we're seeing a lot of that with IoT, connected devices to the cloud, right? Um, on the schedule side, again, looking for purchases in a store, trying to upload something or upload something based on offline visits or something like that. And then trigger batch, you see that a lot in uh, event-based systems, voice, text, media as well. Now, with all of these, there are pros and cons. I guarantee you do one, you're gonna find some, something about that that you probably should have done different. You think you got it, next thing you know, you completely missed the ball, right? Happens all the time, <laughs> happens to me. That is not Steph Curry, no. <laughs> um, So with that, the potential issues are, Real-time, you have a real-time system. What if the data arrives late or comes out of order? How do I handle that, right? That's something I have to programmatically prepare for. Schedule batch. Uh, what if I'm doing a daily aggregation? Upload a file. What happens if the file doesn't show up at the same time that I need to do my schedule batch upload? How do I handle that situation as well? And then trigger batch. What if an audio file is sent and it's too large to process or it's the wrong format? How do I handle that? Those are things you have to programmatically prepare for. How do we connect this and how do we front end that is with PubSub in the cloud. We'll go through the Google terminology by any chance. By show of hands, really quickly, it's a Java group, but anybody use Apache Kafka before? Uh, so if you think about the users who use Kafka as a messaging engine, um, PubSub is our messaging engine in the cloud for Google. It's a managed messaging engine. I like the message queue, topic, subscription. I send data to a topic, someone subscribes to that and pulls that data back, right? So I'll actually show you how to create some of the pub sub topics and subscriptions as well as part of the demonstration a little bit later, but it is completely event driven. I can get into a real time architecture, send message to a topic, once it hits that topic, then I pull that message back in. The great thing about pub sub, it's managed. There's no infrastructure. All you do is create the topic downstream everything happens by the scenes, right? So in the PubSub world, there's a pull subscription, there's a push subscription, 
you have messages, you have acknowledgments, and then you have subscribers to those messages. Um, when you try to get a message from PubSub, there's kind of the, how do you subscribe? How do I get my data from the system? So the old way is the terminology of pull, right? I want to pull the messages, but how do I appropriately pull? I'm doing it on a time bitch, right? I'm trying to pull it. It's kind of the old way to do it. So what we try to do in the PubSub world, instead of doing a pull subscription, is we like to stream the data. Now, when you stream data, be careful what you ask for. Because as much data is sent to that PubSub topic is as much data as you're going to get sent back to you. So you have to be prepared to handle that too. Lastly is probably what is more common these days as well, and that's the push. Um, I need the data and I want it as soon as it happens, push it to me so that I can do something downstream from there, right? So push to specific subscriptions. Once those subscriptions happen, I can do some downstream event. We talked about data flow, we talked about Apache Beam. Apache Beam and data flow would be subscribers to a topic that has messages hitting them. As I send messages to that topic, they are pushed downstream to the pipeline, which then delivers it to my target system of choice, right? It can be a number of different things. In the data flow side, another question. So, where does the business logic come into play? So, it's an orchestration, right? It's not like you're pushing in some metadata or some pipeline. There's got to be some business logic to understand what's coming in, is it valid or not? Yes. So, filtering and business logic can happen in a number of different ways. Uh, in the PubSub world, you can standardize what you want those messages to look like prior to sending it downstream. So I can actually attach a schema to a PubSub topic if I want to. And then that way I know exactly what that message format should look like before I send it downstream. Business logic can be handled in a number of different ways as well. You can actually do the logic in the pipeline itself, in the Java code, one option. Uh, we have a lot of users who will use, um, we, don't, we have a, a Cloud Composer, but it's kind of a, a managed um, way to do orchestration, right? And I can write my business logic in that layer, which would orchestrate the entire process, right? So business logic can go in a lot of different areas. Um, you can actually even do a rules engine, write the rules engine in Java, and put that as a part of the overarching process. So, real scenario, I was working with a customer in the area. Um, they were doing a rules engine. They wanted business logic. They were actually using the same products, up so up, downstream the data flow, in their case, downstream to a repository, our spanner database, which I'll talk about. Um, they actually did the business logic written in Java code and deployed it into a Kubernetes engine in the middle, right? And just made calls back and forth. So they could change the logic in the Kubernetes part and that logic would always propagate downstream to, to the end. The data flow templates, does that, that address your question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> data flow templates, we provide a lot of these, um, but you can write custom templates as well. Um, these are just some of the common templates we have out there. I'll actually show you how we execute these as well. Um, but it's really meant to get you up and running fast. Uh, you can do these through the graphical UI, or today we'll do most of this. Um, through a command line. And you can write your own templates. The only catch is when you write your own templates, you have to store them on a location that's publicly accessible or accessible to all users who are going to call it. So if you put it in a storage bucket and someone else needs access to that template as well, you need to make sure what you share that template with those other users, right? So you can create your own templates and deploy those yourself, make your own calls and call those from APIs. So data flow is serverless, PubSub is serverless. Um, and everything we do, we try to get to a point where we can provide you with a serverless solution. So even on the repository side, we're pushing towards serverless as well. I want to spend a little bit of time and talk about our repository options because I'm going to demonstrate some of this and I want you to understand at least what our options are. At Google, we have managed databases. Um, you can use, um, we have managed databases that's actually not up here, for instance, like a Cloud SQL, which is MySQL, Postgres, or some of the live SQL server near the end of the year in alpha as well, but it's managed database, we manage all the infrastructure, you get your database platform, but you don't have to worry about scale and everything else, we handle all that for you. I'm going to actually show you a couple databases as a part of this today. We'll spend most of our time in something called BigQuery, 
It is our serverless data warehouse in the cloud. BigQuery is interesting because it's serverless in a sense where you actually never have to do any configuration for CPU, memory, you don't have to tune it. You don't have to worry about partitioning as much unless you truly want to partition your data. And a lot of our customers coming from other systems will put their data there and it just runs faster because the platform itself is so different and dynamic. BigQuery is separated in two parts. There's a storage and then there's a compute processing. The only requirement for us is you bring your data to it, you put it in the storage, and it's almost like you're renting the compute whenever you want to run a query. So if I run a query, select statement, it's only pulling a little bit of data, we'll just assign you a few CPUs or one CPU to quickly process and return that data back to you. But if I run a really big statement, like a select star, I'm pretty sure everybody here has probably seen that at some point in their lifetime. Um, if I run a really intensive data, um, a query, database query, I can actually assign multiple CPUs, multiple servers, infinite scale, process it quickly in a matter of seconds. So uh, I've got a demo actually, you can do like a petabyte like a minute, right? That never happens anywhere else. Um, but you can run it, and for that little bit of time that you use the servers for the processing, that's all you actually pay for. So I'm only paying for the queries as opposed to having idle hardware that's doing constant processing. So it's a data warehousing system. Um, Spanner, which I'll touch on, I'll actually show you um, as a part of this as well, is a globally distributed database that is strong system. Bunch of buzzwords. What does that mean? I can have one instance running in one region, or I can have one instance, that's, instance that runs in the U.S. East, Central, West, or I can actually have one instance that runs in the U.S., Asia, and Europe. Any writes can take place on any of those locations. It's still one instance, and it's all propagated across, across the wire, right? So we're the only provider that can do this because we have an autonomous plot, so we can see true time of when commits happen, and strong, have strong consistency to move the data around, right? Um, you'll notice at the bottom pops up the data flow, and we'll talk about some of those solutions as well. But those are some of our database options. For NoSQL, we have a lot of options there as well. Um, and then we have Manage to do Manage Spark, um, if you're like familiar with the Cloudera side of the house. And then we have Bigtable, which is a NoSQL database that you can throw as much as you want at it, process pretty quickly. It is actually what we run YouTube on. So any users of YouTube in here, you get a lot of recommendations. YouTube for us is constantly collecting information, even to the point that every time you stop a video that triggers an event, that stores it in a database somewhere because when you come back, you want to pick up exactly where you left off in your video. That is extremely hard to do, right? So you have a NoSQL database where you throw as much at it as you can, user profiles are stored, when that user comes back, they get that result set back and they can pick up the video of cats or whatever you were watching beforehand um, in exactly that location. So a NoSQL database that I can throw what I want at it, store and dynamically that gets us into serverless ETL. This is more of the downstream part. So we were talking about it earlier, right? You ingest the data from some source system. PubSub can capture it or store it, and then send it downstream through data flow, which can do the storage into something like a BigQuery and storage bucket, and I can do front-end analysis on top of that. With that, I'm a Tommy Boy fan, if you've ever seen that movie, so hopefully this doesn't blow up because I haven't tested it. Um, so with that, I'm going to do a demo. Before I do the demo, I know we've got some um, some some work here um, with the kind of the, the NetBeans side of the house and the IntelliJ. And what I wanted to do is kind of walk you through just through the slides of how we work with IDEs, and I'll show you this as well. But if you wanted to run a data flow pipeline on a local machine and you're used to using IntelliJ, we actually have integration to that as well because it is open. Um, you download our SDK. After you download our SDK, you can run Java on IntelliJ, and the Community Edition is free. Uh, with that, you can actually run Java, you can run Maven, you can run executions, and get your pipeline up and running. How does that look? Well, in IntelliJ, you can actually select the Git repository. We've actually published this publicly for anybody who wants it. And we'll, we'll, I guess we'll put these slides out as well. But if you plug in our GitHub repository, you can pull down all of our data flow templates that are already built. So you want to start writing pipelines, easy way to get the process going, set up your Git repository. After you set up your repository, 
you set up your dependencies for the project. Uh, you're going to leverage Maven, so you're going to import your Maven project as a part of this as well. You go through your prompts. After that, right click your folder, you go through the part of going to Maven, you generate your sources, and you pull that up in there as well. That takes you to our data flow templates. There's a long list of data flow templates that we have. I showed you a list earlier, but you can actually go straight to the data flow templates from here, expand that list, edit the templates if you want, and do some maneuvering on that as well. Right click on any template. From there, you run a create, enter your arguments. So if you want to store it in your project in our Google Cloud, you put those project requirements here, you save it. You add any breaks. You go through the process there of running a debugger. If all works well, you deploy it to the cloud, you're done. Right? So that is the entire process of using IntelliJ to run code and then port that out to Google Cloud. With that, I'm going to switch over to the demonstration here. Any questions before I do so? All right, now this will be a little difficult because um, I can't see the screen and my laptop at the same time with that here. So this is the true definition of flying blind. Let's see if we can do this. How far does this cord go? Alright. Mind if I pop over here real quick? Alright. So we're going to do a couple things, and I'm going to do a few things on the fly here. I have a cloud environment here uh, where I do most of my development. This is all Chrome-based, if anybody's familiar with the platform. But just like I was showing you IntelliJ earlier, this is actually the IntelliJ platform as well. I have it situated here where you can actually go through the process of looking at the code. Uh, right now I have the text to BigQuery template open. So I upload a text file. I put a file into a storage bucket. That file has some data. From that data, I then do something with it. Right, so that is that part. Now, I'm actually going to do the SDA call, SDK call because it's probably a little easier for the purposes of what we're trying to do here. Uh, before coming in, and actually, um, not even before coming in, uh, I, I went to uh, Kaggle. Kaggle is a list of data sets. Um, we actually own Kaggle as well, so I try to leverage some of our listing stuff and just pulled up a list of all the meetups that have happened over the last few years. So it's a list of every meetup that's happened since the year 2017. When was this meetup group established? 16. I might have just missed it. All right. So I did look through the list. I did not see a list. I just didn't know when this was created. So what I'm going to do with that, so the meetupgroup.csv file, I'm going to open that up with a text editor. And it's a list of all of them. You can see it's storage, common and limited. So what I'm going to do is two things. I'm going to upload this into a storage bucket, and then I'm going to show this file um, being done in a batch or streaming process into the cloud. All right. So to do that, the first thing I have to do is set up some targets. So when I told you this is real time, I actually have not created any of the databases either. So this is I'm creating the databases so you can see that working and then we'll actually propagate the data into the systems. Now, on the Spanner side, just to show you first, if I was to create a Spanner database, remember Spanner is a global database, one instance across um, various regions. If I could spell, that would be even better. All right? Brian, quick question. Yeah. The implementations are on top line, Okay. Are you my data? Outside of certain regions? Yeah. For Spanner? Spanner, what I'm looking for, I will Yeah, so, so each product that I'm talking through here can be deployed in various regions. Spanner, if I wanted it to be in US Central or US East 4, which is our Monk's, in a Monk's Corner South Carolina database, I can specifically state where I want that. Also, on Dataflow, there are parameter options. So I can deploy a Dataflow pipeline in any of those regions as well. So I specify where that region is going to be, and I can make sure that that data never leaves that specific area. Yep. So I can put a policy around it. I can script it. I can automate it to make sure that the data never leaves those regions ever. Right. So we, we're we're covered across that, not just from the pub sub data flow side, also the storage side of that as well. We're covered. <coughs> so you can even see here on Spanner, if I were to go a regional model, I select the region. If I were to go multi-regional model. 
I would actually select where I want that. In this case, I'll do uh, America, US, America, Europe, and Asia. I'll create that, and just that quick, I have a spanner instance. I can start developing creating databases. So this is really fast on how to create this. Um, for the purposes of most of the demo here, we'll do most of this in BigQuery, since it's probably going to be a lot quicker. And for anybody who hasn't seen BigQuery, uh, BigQuery is our data warehousing platform in the cloud. Again, here's a project. Here's a data set. I'm going to create a new data set. And as a part of that, I'm going to create the meetup group. And I know the categories for that. So I want to say create table. I'm going to give it an empty table. And I'm going to call it meetup. I'm very creative with my naming schemes. And I'm going to put a schema in here. Yep, so the CSV file, I could actually say, let's just say I was uploading a CSV file directly to BigQuery, I could auto-detect the scheme, all right? So for the purposes of this, I'm going to create it. When you use one of our templates, we're doing templates now, all right? So I'm going to go through the process of just creating the database, creating the schema. That way, when I push the data to it, it knows exactly what that format looks like. So here's my schema. I'm going to copy that in. So notice you have a couple areas here. We got a category, we have a city, we have a state, we have an ID for each group, and then we have a meetup name. So I'm going to create that table. That'll take just a second. And now I have a meetup table. You can see it here. I'll scroll down. Let's see if I can slide this up a little bit. There we go. So now you can see the schemas here, and I could edit that schema. So I'm going to do two. I'm going to do one for uh, streaming data, and then I'm going to do one that's going to be just based on PubSub. So well, that way we'll have two different ones. They'll both be completely empty, and you'll kind of get a sense of it from there. So the one we're going to do for PubSub, I'll call it Meetup Stream. Again, I don't put a lot of name, a lot of thought to the name, to make it really simple. Uh, that way I don't forget. So now I have two databases. I have a Meetup, and then I have a Meetup Stream database. Now. After that, that file we have is actually sitting in a bucket. So if I scroll down here to Vincent Labs, Data Flow, and I go to <coughs> Input, that same file that we just had with all the meetup groups is actually sitting in that bucket. So now the file is sitting there, I want to figure out how to get this into BigQuery. To do that, I'm actually going to go back to my environment here. Pull up a command line. First thing we'll do is just a quick MBN clean to compile, make sure everything's all right there. Once that process finishes up, we will go through the process now of creating the database on the big base, creating the data flow pipeline to work with it. So it looks like that's just about done. All right, there we go. So now we have a successful build. Great. I'm going to paste the code in, and just I'll expand this just so everybody can see it as well. So what you see here is you have a, a our G file command. So this is all API based. I could have created this in the UI as well. I'm doing this more so this is a Java group. I'm trying to be as API focused as possible as opposed to showing console UIs. But what I've done is I've called it, I've created the data flow job, I've put some parameters in here. I've got a transform.js, which is JavaScript. I can show you that file, but pretty much if I wanted to map something into this as well. So I had a CSV file with just a couple fields. What if I wanted to add a third column to that and auto-populate that with a value? I could actually do that in JavaScript here before I create my pipeline. Um, the only other file that's required for this specific one is I have to create some form of a schema. So I tell it the schema, I tell it my transformations, all Java based, and then I run my pipeline. What that does is, if I go back to my areas here, not in this case. I could have, but I, I could have, if, if I were to put business logic in here, I actually would have done it in a transform.javascript file at the top level, and then it would have went downstream from there. So 
So we could have known that. And I can actually show you the file if I can take one. Actually, let's do that while we uh, are doing it. Before I show you anything else. So that transform.js file is right here. Very simple transform file. This is all Java based. I'm pretty much just saying what those values are and save it into a, a, a string. And then we're going to use it in a JSON format before we submit it. Right? So I could have put business logic here in a function. I could have done it a number of different ways. If I would have put business logic, I would have added a few lines of code. All right. So with that, I'm going to show you the data flow pipeline. So we scroll down here to data flow. And you can see here this text of BigQuery. And this is running. This is all Java behind the scenes. I can scroll down and show you all the, the part of functions and everything that goes along with it. But the key here is we'll go to Meetup. This is all going to the Meetup folder. All right, let's give ourselves a little space here. And if I scroll down, you can actually see I've already started streaming data into the database just that quick on the pipeline. So the pipeline is running. If I go back here, you can actually see this is a streaming pipeline, so the pipeline continues to stay up, so that way the more data I send, the better. I go back to BigQuery, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to run a query on this table, and I'm going to say select star, let's, let's just say select count. So show me every record in this database. I don't need a limit on that. And I'm going to run that statement. So let's just see how many rows we've sent to this. Right, so right now, just that quick, I've got six. 16,000 rows in this database, but I want to see how many meetups are in, let's just say, North Carolina, right? Let's see if you guys made the list. I don't think it was in here. So I'll say select star from that, and let's just say where, uh, let's say, state equals NC. Let's see if anybody's in there from NC. Uh, outside of the quotes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that the single quote you're grabbing the whole word clause as a, the table name. Oh, I love it when the group of developers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Actually, let's do a preview before we even do that. Hey, Rick, Rick, for Vincent, you've got a you've got a back. <laughs> Oh, it's got a back tick in there. See, somebody got it. Are you in QA? <laughs> 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 All right. You know, man, you like on the game. Yeah. All right, let's, let's do it this way. So let's recreate that because I, I, I fat fingered it. All right. So that runs. And then we say, where? Uh, let's see, state equals. I think in there, right? And there we go. So we got a bunch of them with New York, I think. So here's our result set. Now let's just say and see. See if we got any in there from North Carolina. This famous group made it. That would be enough. Alright, so to create that, this is a streaming pipeline, remember? So if I create a new record put it into a storage bucket, that record should then stream into the system. So, with that being said, let's go back, let's get out of here, and let's just go ahead and say, I'll do this in the command line, I guess I'm telling them too much on my age because I'm putting things in the command line. Alright, so we'll say, we'll call this uh, new meetup.csv and those fields for that specific CSV were as follows. So we had um, the first one was category, so let's just say category for this group would be tech. Alright, and we had city, of course, that's Charlotte. Uh, the next one I think is state. And then we had ID, I'm just going to give it a random ID number, which is an integer. Uh, and then uh, meetup name. So the meetup name, Charlotte, Java, yeah. group. I'm going to put with awesome speaker. 
<laughs> All right. And we'll save that. Now, I've got my file here. I need to get that into a storage bucket. So what I'm going to do now is use my command line. GS2, CP, meetup. And I'm going to push that to the bucket that I have everything stored in. In this case, I know what that is. All right. So that file is now pushed to the bucket. Let's just make sure it's there. But actually, before even making sure it's there, let's see how quickly this resolved, right? So the, the file's pushed out, just hit the bucket. And actually, I think I'm on a cache result set. So let me double check, take cache now. Go to settings, use cache sets. Did I put MC or did I put North Carolina? I can't remember. Let's go back real quick. And let's check that story bucket. <laughs> QA guys already had one fixed today, so we're going to find it. All right. Data flow, input, new meetup.csv. And I can actually take a look at that file here if I wanted to also. So C Java group, awesome speaker, there we go. Go back here. I can actually take a look at my stream buffer. Looks like roughly the same amount of records. And no results yet. So as that goes through, I'm gonna do two more things. First thing I'm gonna do is create two more pipelines and we'll test those as well. The first pipeline is we're going to do a pub sub to BigQuery one. Alright, so this is pub sub to BigQuery. And the same thing, we're running those same commands, we're giving it parameters, and we have specific topics. Now, as a part of that pipeline, I actually have to create a pub sub topic, which I did not do. So let's go to PubSub. And I'm just going to create a topic and call it, uh, if you had to guess, a little simple. I'll call it Meetup. All right, and just that quick, I have a topic that I can push data into. The other thing I'm going to do is, let's just say I want the topic to not only push data down to BigQuery, I also want that topic to push data down to a storage bucket for analytics or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to also create a pipeline that's going to do that as well. Go back here, create that pipeline. And again, this is all command line based. Run it, hit it one time, and now I have a streaming job. If I go back to my data flow side, You'll see a couple things. I'll have a couple of different processes running at this specific time. Hey, Brian, what is Apache Beam coming in for? What was that? Apache Beam. Apache Beam? Yeah. So, data flow underneath the covers is actually running Apache Beam. So, whenever I create a uh, data flow pipeline, the Apache Beam is actually the process that the engine that's running. Data flow, is a, data flow is actually the managed services doing all the orchestration of the, the infrastructure underneath, meaning I run Apache Beam, but I run a service. If I were to do this on primitive VM, I wouldn't have the server side of it going. It would just be an Apache Beam process that I put into a VM and send stuff to. Data flow is actually assigning CPU based on what I'm throwing at the job. In a SaaS scenario, if you were to charge back, how would you have? Yep. For each pipeline, you actually can put a label to it, and that way I can be charged back based on label consumption. Meaning, this pipeline in data flow, this topic in PubSub has a customer name. I can see exactly everything that was spent based on the label I assigned to it. Right? So I can always be charged back that way. But it's truly pay as you go, right? So everything they use is exactly what they pay for on the consumption. All right, so that was 
couple of different projects. So we've got two streaming pipelines running. And it looks like one of them is down here. So this one actually, the reason it did not stay up is because it aired out. So there's our, um, our reason that it did not come back up. And that about a cloud label, which means I fat fingered my command when I put it in. So there you go. It does not protect the user from itself. So I'll show you a couple things here. So we now have a pipeline, and that pipeline is streaming from a PubSub topic. So let's go to PubSub. And I'm actually just going to push a test message in. And if I click the topic, so we did meetup. And we publish a message. The message has to be in JSON format. If anybody's familiar with that, it's just a bunch of brackets. Uh, so city, Charlotte, I just copied what we put for some other numbers. I did not put the loss of speaker, so let me do that again. QA comment over here again? Yeah. All right, all right. Take it for myself. All right, so I'm going to publish that message. And if I go back to BigQuery now, so now I've published the message to the topic. Remember, this is actually doing two things. It's sending it to the BigQuery meetup screen table, but it is also sending the message downstream to a storage bucket and output that. So I go back to BigQuery. Yeah. 